Hi, I'm Jim Papandrea. Welcome to my office. And welcome to the first edition of my video rant. I call this one, The Myth of Acceptable Pseudonymity. Tell me if you've heard this one. Some people will tell you that some of the New Testament documents, for example, maybe some of the letters of Paul, were not in fact written by apostles, uh, but were written later, maybe by students of the apostles or by someone that uh, belonged to a certain school of thought. And so some of these letters that are traditionally attributed to Paul, for example, weren't really written by Paul. They were written later. Paul's name was put on them as a way to honor the apostle or to continue the legacy of his teaching. But the myth goes on to say it doesn't matter because in reality everybody in the ancient world was doing that. It was a very common thing to write a document, put someone else's name on it, and uh, emulate their style and publish a document under someone else's name. Uh, they all knew it was happening and everybody was fine with it. Well, that is a myth. It's a myth that's been around a very long time, decades, maybe even over a century. And the myth caught on so quickly that no one really questioned it until it got to the point where now, it seems, it's just um, a matter of common knowledge, even among scholars. Now maybe the myth was developed at a time uh, when people were questioning the value of biblical criticism and maybe the myth was an attempt to sort of rescue certain New Testament texts from irrelevance. But it doesn't do that. It doesn't rescue them from irrelevance. What it does is create two canons, one apostolic and one not, and give us a situation where we don't know where to draw the line between the apostolic documents and the post-apostolic documents. The other problem with the myth is that it's simply not true. And the proof of that is this. If the myth were true, there would be evidence in the early Christian documents and among the church fathers, there would be evidence of people writing things like, hey, lots of people write documents under someone else's name and we're all fine with it, it's not a problem. When you actually look at the evidence though, what you find is that nobody says that. What you do find is uh, folks like Tertullian who says, we know the Acts of Paul and Thecla was not written by someone with authority. It may have been written by someone who meant well, but it was written uh, as a forgery, and therefore it is not authoritative. Or Epiphanius, who says that when people write Gospels in the name of someone else, he's talking here specifically about the Gnostic Gospels, when people write Gospels in the name of someone else, they are creating what he called a fabrication, or a fiction, or a forgery. The point is that the early Christians, had they believed that any New Testament documents were not written by the person who's uh, traditionally assumed to be the author, if they really believed that, those documents would not be in the New Testament. Now I want to be clear about this. If the early Christian bishops and theologians thought that any of the New Testament documents were written by someone other than the person whose name is on it, it would not have made it into the New Testament canon. It would have been considered a forgery, and it would have been thrown out as not authoritative. Uh, it would not be in the Bible today because, to quote what Epiphanius is trying to say, this is what the Gnostics do. This is what the heretics do. They fabricate documents. They write documents under someone else's name. Pseudonymity was not acceptable in the early church. It was considered a fraud. Now it's not as though the early Christians were naive or that they didn't understand the issues surrounding authorship. They did. In fact, they debated over the letter to the Hebrews and whether or not that was written by Paul. But because Paul's name isn't actually in the document, at the end of the day, they could leave a question mark over the authorship of Hebrews and still include it in the canon. Incidentally, no one in the early church questioned the authorship of the pastoral epistles. These are the documents, uh, the Timothy and Titus letters, that are often sort of thrown out as the first ones to go in terms of Pauline authorship. But no one in the early church questioned that. They all believed that Paul had written the pastoral epistles. And the point here is this. If they had not believed that, if they had believed that someone else wrote them, it would not be considered acceptable and it would not still be okay to put them in the canon. They would have been considered forgeries and they would have been thrown out. Now this begs the question, of course, 
how did the early Christians decide what documents would be included in the New Testament? Well, for that, you have to read a chapter in my book, Reading the Early Church Fathers. I've got a chapter in here that talks about the formation of the New Testament canon. But I will tell you, the primary criterion was authorship. And if a document was considered pseudonymous, it would not have been included in our Bible. This is why it's important for people who study the New Testament to also understand the early church, the context within which our New Testament was put together. Because the church gave us the New Testament, not the other way around. So the next time someone tries to propose to you the myth of acceptable pseudonymity, ask them this one question. Where's your evidence? Where is the evidence that in the early church anyone thought pseudonymity was acceptable? The truth is, there is none. In fact, when you look at the evidence, what you'll see is that the early Christians considered pseudonymity a fabrication, a forgery, a fiction, a fraud. And as Epiphanius was trying to tell us, that's what the heretics do. That's what the Gnostics do. They write documents under someone else's name. We don't do that. I hope you'll check out my book, Reading the Early Church Fathers, as a way to get into the context of the early church and um, the world surrounding the New Testament. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Thanks for joining me on my first edition of my video rant.